U.S. State Department, in its three-volume report on the origins of communism in Russia, published in 1931, reveals how Jewish-controlled German banks, under the leadership of Max Warburg, conspired as early as 1914 to send large payments to Lenin, Trotsky, and others in their attempts to bring down the Tsar. When the white Russian patriots heroically attempted to regain their freedom from the Jews, the Judaica says compact Jewish masses were utilized by the Bolsheviks to suppress such counter-revolution. Clearly, Jews and native Russians were engaged in a death struggle over the destiny of Russia. Unfortunately, the Jewish masses won. The Jewish masses won. The Jewish masses won. We survive. That's what they tell us. What they mean is, they will survive. We surrendered in November at a time when we were perched on the edge of victory. Betrayed by the cowards and the traitors within our ranks. How do we fight them? We unite. We must join together for a greater Germany. We will hang the properties, crush the communists. We will disinfect our country of the Jewish government. Sacrifice. We will struggle, yes. But only then will we triumph. And we will was the year in which World War I broke out. Within two years, Germany had won that war. Not alone won it nominally, but won it actually. The German submarines, which were a surprise to the world, had swept all the convoys from the Atlantic Ocean, and Great Britain stood there without ammunition for her soldiers, at that time, the French army had mutinied. They lost 600,000 of the flower of the French youth on the farm. The Russian army was defecting. They didn't like the Tsar. And the Italian army had collapsed. Not a shot had been fired on the German soil. Not an enemy soldier had crossed the border into Germany. And yet, here was Germany offering England well, England in the summer of 1916 was considering that. Seriously, they had no choice. While that was going on, the Zionists in Germany, who represented the Zionists from Eastern Europe, and they said, we will guarantee to bring the United States into the war as your ally, to fight with you on your side, if you will promise us Palestine after you win the war. The price you must pay up is Palestine after you have won the war and defeated Germany, Austria, Hungary, and Turkey. They made that promise in October of 1916, and that was called the Balfour Declaration. The Balfour Declaration was merely Great Britain's promise to pay the Zionists what they had agreed upon as a consideration for getting the United States into the war. That is where all the trouble starts.
Above all, we must remove the Jews. Later on our banks, they lost us the war. They alone were responsible for the economic disaster in the world. November 1938, the Nazis organize a great anti-Jewish pogrom, the Night of the Broken Glass. All over Germany, synagogues are burnt, shop windows are broken. Certainly, we wanted the Jews out of Germany. When you ask what have the Germans done to the Jews, you must always ask what have the Jews done the Jews to the Germans. Since 1850, they have done three things which are really dramatic. Number one, they were a small minority of 2% of the population. Uh, at the time when Hitler came to power, 500,000 uh, within 60 million German people. This small minority managed to control about 50% of the media about 70% of all judges to have a tremendous influence in movie and in uh, theater and in literature they were overrepresented this is one thing they were absolutely overrepresented as today in England in France and in the United States second Jews were at the origin of a lot of catastrophic financial bank crashes in Germany between 1870 and 1920. This is all documented. I mean, it's not Nazi propaganda or anti-Semitic or Arab propaganda. It's a lot of books have been published, even by Jewish Germans, about this problem. They have millions of German fathers have lost their incomes, their, uh, their fortune, their savings because of these Jewish gangsters, uh, bank gangsters and, and, uh, and speculation people. Then the third point, which was psychologically the most dangerous of all, they have introduced into German art and culture and theater and movie decadence, immorality. The first homosexual theaters, plays, were made in Berlin in the 1920s. The first adultery theater plays were made in the 1880s and 1890s, 100 years ago, by Jewish authors. Adultery, uh, then sexual perversions of all sorts, sadism, masochism, a uh, lot of uh, homosexuality, all these things, and then de decadent art you know, an art which is absolutely ridiculous, so-called modern art, it was all pushed by Jewish intellectuals and this created among the German people uh, a big, uh, a, a, a big revolt and uh, there were furious reactions in Germany and this is why Adolf Hitler came to power and within two years he brought six million unemployed Germans back into their jobs, he created six million jobs, it's incredible. ein deutsches Theater, einen deutschen Film, eine deutsche Presse, ein deutsches Schrifttum, eine deutsche bildende Kunst und einen deutschen Rundfunk. Der früher oft gegen uns vorgebrachte Einwand, es gäbe keine Möglichkeit, die Juden aus dem Kunst- und Kulturleben zu beseitigen, weil deren zu viele seien und wir die leeren Plätze nicht neu besetzen könnten, ist glänzend widerlegt worden. Secret negotiation between the Nazis and the Zionists in 1933, which allowed German Jews and their assets to go to Palestine. The group of Zionists at the same time was quietly negotiating an agreement with the Nazis. 
to allow the immigration of German Jews and the transfer of their assets to Palestine. That deal, reported in August 1933, was the transfer agreement. Palestine, sparsely settled by Jews at the time, was radically changed as a result. I lived in Palestine from 1933 to 1936, and uh, we saw every week transports of German Jews coming to settle in Palestine. German Jewish settlement of Palestine was for a time official Nazi policy. These photos of Jewish life in Palestine along with a lengthy text appeared in 1934 in the Berlin paper Der Angry. The publisher, Hitler's propaganda minister, Josef Goebbels. A Nazi visits Palestine was the title of the multi-part series. A medal was struck by Goebbels in commemoration. On one side, the swastika, on the other, the Star of David. Hitler demanded one concession for the transfer agreement, that the call for a boycott of the Reich, raised by Jews here and elsewhere, be rejected by the Zionists. The Zionists made that concession.